Good morning. Good morning. Well, it is a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be at the beach. We just want to welcome everyone. We're excited about all the baptisms that are going to take place today. And, you know, there's something special about encountering God in the world that he created. And so I want you this morning as we enter into praise and worship to really be mindful of your surroundings because they look a lot different than our normal Sunday morning surroundings. So take time as you worship to, to look at the sky, breathe in the sand and that fresh beach air. And when we go down there for ba baptism, I really want you to just be mindful that the love of the Lord is like the waves of the ocean. I mean, it's never ending. It's relentless. It's unconditional. It's, it's larger than life. And that is God's love for you this morning. And so I really want you to just receive that. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Father God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for this morning, Lord. I pray that we will, each and every one of us, experience your presence in a fresh way. Lord, wrap your arms around us, love on us, help us to receive that love, and uh, God, we just want to tell you this morning that you have our hearts. Can you just say that to the Lord? You, you have, have our, our hearts. hearts. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Well, Sherry did a really good job. Yeah, she did. So let's just worship together. Yeah. 
Amen. So it's not about singing louder. But this, this bridge says, shine your light and let the whole world see. I mean, that's, that's our job. To shine the light of Jesus so that everyone around us can see that he is the risen king. Amen. So let's just sing that together. Shine your light. Shine a light and let the whole world see. Sing it for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. Sing it for the glory of the risen King. Sing it again, just sing voices. Shine a light and let the whole world see. Sing in for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. Sing in for the glory of the risen King.
Jesus. What could I do? say these words, do we mean it? What does that look like? What does it look like to surrender to Jesus? How, how amazing would life be? Every area to give it to Him. So let's consecrate that as a church. Let's sing it out. So here I am, Lord. So I stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all. I am in your yes, Lord. I'll stand.
to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see never understand the price that you paid for his saving. Got to see your son hang on that tree. I can't, I can't imagine everything that you gave for me, all my mistakes, all my wrongdoings, Lord. But there is grace and mercy. No. And there is love. Amen. So as I sing out, I can sing with a clear conscience, knowing that Jesus paid it all for me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you paid it all when you hung on that tree. Yep. You were beaten and you were Praise your holy name. And I just remember, in, in my own way, what, what, what you paid. And the least that I can do, Savior, is sing of your glory. Sing of your might. Sing because you are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. That's worthy. right. That's right. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy all praise, all honor, all glory belongs That's to right, you. That's right, Antonio. Sing. Say that out. Say it out loud. All praise, all honor, all glory goes to Come you, on, Lord. Church, you are worthy. Let's talk about it. Let's sing about it. Worthy are you. Worthy are you that sits upon the throne on the right hand of the Father. You who came and died for my sins, for my stupidity, you gave it all. How wonderful. How wonderful. So let's just sing it out. Here I am to worship. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to
You know, as we were singing the song before this one, and it was talking about being fully and completely committed. I, I don't know where you are in your journey, but I'm, I'm more committed today than I was yesterday. But I sing songs like that in faith because I know that I'm not yet fully committed. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm saying that in past tense, then that's saying I'm done. And I, I don't want you to lie to me and raise your hand if the finished work is completely done in you yet. Because guess what? It's not, it's not done in me, it's not done in you. But as Pastor Sherry said, when she was going through cancer, and I'll always remember this, when people would ask you how you were doing, you said, I'm as good as I know how to be today. And, and you know, I was committed as I know how to be today. But as God speaks to me, and he puts his finger, God ever do this, he puts his finger on an area that's not yet sanctified. And sanctified, just is a big word for me, means being made holy in a particular area. Maybe he touches a thought in your mind, or maybe he says, uh, this needs to change, this attitude, this action, this way of doing life, this trust, or this fear that I want to take away. And he puts his finger on it, and immediately it's that, can, can I really go there? And as the loving father that he is, he says, yes, you, 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 you can go there. Did you just hand me my Bible? I, I, I think I have this, this scripture right here. In, in, uh, I, I think it's 1 Peter chapter 1. I think in my notes I put 2 Peter chapter 1. But uh, it's, it's one of the Peters that we've just been reading. And uh, it says, <laughs> in chapter 1 and verse 4, let's see if we got it here. I just got the reference completely wrong. It's not even first or second Peter. One, it's in Peter, I know that. But it says, so that we may participate in the divine nature. And, and Peter's talking and he's saying that we as, as the kids of heaven have an opportunity to participate in Christ's divine nature. I hope that when people look at me, they see a little bit more of Jesus than they did yesterday. But I'm not completely divine. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I want to say amen to that. But we participate in that divine nature. And today we're going to hear from three people. And we're going to hear about how God is taking them from glory to glory. And there's a couple of words, redemption, restoration, renewal, and I believe it sets the stage for the word that ended last Sunday, the prophetic word that ended last Sunday, which was that we are ready for a radical reformation. Radical reformation. So Antonio is going to come and talk about redemption for six minutes. Time him. Somebody time him, okay? <laughs> Jaina is going to come and talk about restoration for six minutes. And then Michael is going to round it out, and he's going to talk about renewal. And then we're going to go down to the waters of baptism, because one of the great things about baptism is that it is a picture of of all of these words. Restoration, it's a picture of renewal, it's a picture of redemption, and I believe that we're going to have revival. So, would you give Antonio a warm six-minute welcome? Morning, everyone. Morning. So, with the count, uh, the clock already going here. Uh, scripture I started looking at when Pastor started talking to me about redemption was where it says, in him, in Jesus, 
we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Our redemption comes through the shed blood, shed blood of Jesus Christ. We can't get it any other place than that. Um, for a long time, I didn't understand that. I didn't believe that. Um, I had always, through my lifetime, I've always been in and out of churches. And the reason why is because every time I started getting a little closer to God, I started to see the person that, who I was right then at that moment. Not the person that God wanted me to be. I started, I, I, every time I got close to him, I started hearing the lies and, lies and the labels that the devil used to put on me. You know, liar, thief, criminal, worthless. All, none of that was true. But every time I would get close to God, I would start pulling back from it because I started seeing that stuff come on me. But then, you know, one day a few years ago, we came by the church here. And I was like, all right, we'll give this church a try. Yes. From the moment I stepped in the door, I found nothing but love, I found nothing but warmth, I found nothing but grace. Still under, wasn't understanding why was I seeing this? Why was I feeling this? You know, and I was like, you know what? I'm not I, I'm not deserving of being in a place like this. Pastor Durant doesn't know this though, but after that first visit, he came to my house. I wasn't there, but he came to my house and that meant a lot. He, he, came, he brought that grace to my house that he was talking about that Sunday. And that made all the difference in the world because I was about to take off and start running again, you know. And then I started come, come to find out, hey, these lies, these things that he's that, that, that the enemy's been bringing on me, these labels that I've been placing on myself, they're not true. They're not real. And then the most, more I started getting close to God, more of those labels started to fall off. And then we, then a couple of weeks later, he preached a, a sermon on redemption. And it started to click for me there. That the reason that I was always getting asked a question on my time when I was running from God, someone was all I, I would always send somebody to ask me, "Why are you running? Why are you running?" The answer to that question now is because I was afraid. I was afraid to bring the light the stuff that I was wearing on me, those labels. I was afraid that a holy God was looking at me, an unholy, dirty, filthy creature, and I didn't want I didn't want His eyes on me. But I come to understand the reason why he was pursuing me, the reason why he was chasing me, was because he wanted to redeem. Amen. Right? And what does redeem mean? It means that he is he. There was a price that was paid. Yep. Yep. It's like when you go to Kmart or Walmart, you turn in cash to redeem something that was on the shelf. Right? So you come and buy that thing that was on the shelf to make it your own possession. That's why he was pursuing because he wanted to redeem. But it was his blood. It was it was a costly price. Yeah. It was his blood that was needed in order to buy me back from that sin, to redeem me from out of that cage with those labels that I was living in. And then one day, October 13th, that was the day me and my entire family, we went, went to the waters of baptism. And that day, the rest of those labels that he was pulling off, I left all those labels in the bottom of that baptism. Yeah, come on. was I, I a thief, no longer was I a criminal, a cheat, no longer was I that, I was called, he called me by a different name. Yeah, yeah. When I came out of that water, I heard, son, yeah. my redeemed son. Yes. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do with each and every one of us here. If you haven't been there, if you haven't been there, give it to him, don't run. Don't run, don't let the fear keep you away from it. There's a holy God that's looking to sanctify you and make you as holy as he is. But you have to be there. You have to go there and go through the process. The blood has already been shed. The blood has already paid the price. It is yours. It's a, it's a free gift. It's His grace. It's His redeeming power that's in His blood. Awesome. Wow. That was powerful. That was like four minutes. And, and, I still got if two if minutes. you heard one thing, <laughs> you still got two minutes. If you heard one thing, it's that God is in the redeeming business. He's no respecter of persons. It's not your past does not limit you of your future. Uh, but He is redeeming God. Let's thank the Lord again for this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So it was 2 Peter 1, 4. I was looking in 2 Peter 2. But it was the verse before Spude. So uh, anyway. Um, so I, I felt like um, 
Jaina had another word for us. And uh, so, Jaina, would you come and just continue what, uh, what God's doing here in this area of preparing us to head down then to the waters of baptism? Talk to us about restoration. And you might have to stand right there, and you might have to be really loud, okay? Can you do it? Yeah. Oh, but here we go. don't know, we just went to summer camp and the theme was actually restored for more. So I thought I would go through my notes and I have this, this would be easy for me. Um, but then as I was praying, I felt like the Lord was like, that's not what I want you to speak um, So <laughs> he gave me a word um, and he said, he simply just said new wine. And I was like, okay. Mm. So I started researching that and going into that. And um, I actually looked up the process of making wine. And so um, I'm kind of comparing the process that the Lord takes us through in restoring us to the process of that a winemaker does in making a, a fine bottle of wine. Um, and so one of the first things that happens when a, wine, a, a bottle of wine is made is the grapes have to be crushed and pressed. So before you can be restored, there is this process of the hurting and the breaking down. But the Lord uses that process to um, to break down the things in our lives, break down the walls in our lives, the things in our lives that are not in line with Him, and that um, that are keeping us from going deeper with Him and going further with Him and being fully restored. And so we have to go through that process of crushing and pressing. And whether that's a first time process for you of being, um, like coming to know the Lord, or there's like rough spots in everybody's walk with the Lord where um, he's teaching you new things and he's breaking down the old the old you and making something new in you. Mm, that's good. Um, so then there's this process of fermentation where um, there's a long a lot of waiting and that can be a short period of time or a longer period of time but it all depends on that bottle of wine or that person specifically and so through this process um pastor uh, pastor i was just talking to him yesterday and he reminded me of the verse in psalms 46 10 and i actually felt like led to share that verse where it says be still and know that i am god so even in this process of waiting where it's like okay god what are we doing we're just waiting doesn't look like a whole lot's happening um there's this process of waiting and just knowing that he's god and knowing that he's there and um you're still he's preparing you for what he has next because next there's a process of clarification and so all the dead yeast and the waste and the things that need to be removed are removed and um, binding occurs when there's substances, substances that they add to the wine to give it a better flavor and a better texture and a color. And so through all of this, through the hurting and the waiting, through, at the end of it all, the Lord wants to give you more than you had in the beginning. Amen. It's not just um, breaking you down and taking away those things, but he's giving you more than you had in the beginning. And um, he's making you fine wine. I guess. And, um, so yeah, so I guess my encouragement to you would just be that if you are in that process of crushing or pressing or in that process of waiting, just be still, know that he is God and know that he has so much more for you in the future to make you so much greater than you could have imagined before. to pray over us and, and here's what I what I want for her to pray you may be in that restoration process and that waiting or that crushing seems beyond what you can bear but I, I want her to pray for your perseverance remember when Remember when Jesus says, I think it was to Peter, but I pray for you that you might not fail, that you might not fall away. And uh, so would you just do that over us? Why don't I just come up with you? 
somebody to pray for me or pray with me, um, just kind of pull them aside sometime during this. I mean, you're not going to be able to miss that on your shirt, but... Uh, <laughs> Work in progress. Just, just say, you know, would you pray with me in this particular area? We didn't come here just to have a ritual. We came here to be the church, right? Amen. Worship was awesome. Let's let God minister in the same awesome way. Michael? Six minutes, your timer is yeah. going. Oh, yeah. It's going. So uh, today here, uh, you know, of course you can see this, uh, uh, try to do a little bit of an illustrated uh, message here for six minutes, but this shirt here, as you all see it, says sin. And it's rather ugly, and it looks nasty. And this is the way we are before we come to Christ. God sees us like this. But seeing us like this, he was willing to die for that. Amen. To change that. That brings infinite worth and value to you, even in this state. But this state of sin, you know, look at this shirt. You know, when God puts his light beam on us, he begins to make us aware of this. And, and as we become aware of it, we may try to wash it off. There is nothing I can do to get this off. I can wash this shirt a thousand times, but it would still say sin. And, and it's until I come to Jesus Christ, the one who died for me, and ask him to save me, does he take this away? There's nothing else we can wash it away. Only the blood of Jesus can make this clean, can cleanse this. Because sin is the very fabric of our being before we come to Christ. It's in our, it's in our fears, it's in our pride, it's in our lust, it's in everything that we do to serve self. And everything we do before Christ is serving self in some way. Even what appears good on the outside, it's got some motivation in it for me of what to do. You know, of how I can benefit from it. So when I, you know, before Christ, I may be looking like I'm loving you on the outside, but hey, I want something back. <laughs> you know, so I'm really seeking my own. And it really is a true love. I'm really not honoring the image of God in another person. When we don't honor the image of God and others, we end up injuring them or hurting them, which comes back and hurts ourselves. And, and sin ultimately brings death. And this is what this shirt represents. Death. The wages of sin is death. And you think about that. And I just want to remind you this morning, before we go to the waters of baptism, how great a salvation we have yes. all had. Amen. Yes. Free gift. there is nothing that can wash away. Baptism represents that. It represents only what Christ could do through the Holy Spirit right. on your life. Nothing. No matter how hard I try, and we do try. Mm -hmm. Sometimes before we come to Christ, we try to cover it up. We try to act like it didn't happen. We try to justify ourselves, make up for the wrong things that we've done. And we spend so much energy, time, or strength. Or maybe we're just so full of ourselves, we don't even know about it. And, and, and so we go around thinking we're the best. You know, I've climbed Mount Everest. I've done this. I've surfed on, on, on the waves of Hawaii. Man, I am all that it is. <laughs> and I made myself look better than everybody else. 
But when I do that, I'm not serving you or honoring you whatsoever. But when God puts his light on that, right. it makes me aware of this. I'm like, God, I haven't loved anyone but myself. <laughs> and, and, and then he makes us aware that only Jesus can save us. Mm -hmm. Only he can save us. And when I say, Jesus, save me, he begins to do this. comes into me, you know, he, he is like, you know, he's, he's not only, he's just taking this away, he's yeah. taking it off, and he throws it away, yeah. and it dies with him on the cross, mm -hmm. and he gives us something new, yeah. you know, a whole new, you know, there's nothing that can be changed about that, he, he makes the whole fabric of our being new, yeah. and the light of the world is on the inside of us, and then that light begins to show you know, show things in our lives, uh, you know, even further. You know, you'd be young, as Pastor was saying, you may have some fear here, you may have some lust here, you may have some pride here. And that light gives you these ideas, whoa, I need to change. Yeah. And, and so as that light bulb comes on, like really just went big, you know, you know, we begin to think, I'm not loving God in this area, I'm not loving others in this area, I'm still selfish in this area. But that light, yeah. And so this is what renewal is. The biggest part of renewal is accepting Jesus. It changes the fabric of your being. It changes your motivations for fear, quiet, lust, and faith, hope, and love. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it does. And the scripture verse that God gave me for this comes out of Titus.
we're hearing this talk about restoration, right? We're hearing this all this stuff, this, this talk about hope, about just God renew me, make me new. That's our prayer to the day we die. His last name is Mercy. So I wanted to encourage each and every one of you if you have not accepted Christ in that area of your life, He is so good. Just Amen. Come. You're on the side of mercy. When you come with those filthy rags, when you come with this, this stuff, it hurts. It's you, it's who you thought you were. But he wants to put that down. And if you'll give him a chance, you'll see how good he is. And he'll put some distance between you and that sin. And although you'll, you'll be reminded, there'll be times when the devil will be saying junk to your head. Go back to the day when you remember and somebody told you Jesus is good. There is no state of being good in Christ. Got your name out here. Amen. Amen. History stands on the side of Christ. And one day, the owner of it all is coming back yes, again. Amen. Don't wait. Yep. I'm talking to both, both those who are holding back and those that are outside looking. Man, I don't know about those Christians, man. You know? Something, something speaking to me. That makes sense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he said something about being a light. Letting God shine in your heart and reflecting that outward. You're doing an awesome ministry. Paul says that some of you are pastors, some of you are teachers, some of you have an interpretation or an understanding. All of you can share this with somebody else to help lift them up in the day. Did you know that if you walk by somebody during the first part of the day and you say, hey, good morning to you, and you just walk on by, you know how good that makes that person feel? They feel valued. You're echoing God's value in their life. So keep on shining, church. Keep on being the light and turn it up a notch, okay? Let the Lord begin to shine on you because I know that there are fruits and there are gifts and stuff that God's prompting on you all. Turn it on. Trust Him for it. Amen. Amen. So you heard the word mercy. And as we respond to that mercy, the renewal, the restoration, redemption, but He's going to lead us in the song, God, you're so good. And I want you to prayerfully bow your heart, your head before the Lord and say, God, where is it that I need to be renewed? Where do I need your mercy? Where do I need to be redeemed? And let's just do business with God. He's drawing by the power of His Holy Spirit. He's drawing us closer to Him. Let's respond to Him today. God.
to rip the power of sin from my life. And you'd like to give your life to Him today. Start that journey towards Him. You're not going to be perfect. Your life isn't going to be perfect. But you're responding to the Spirit's drawing. You may even have physical, like your, your, your stomach's churning, your heart's pounding. Your, it, it may be, you just know that you know, like, I need to begin that. Could I just see a, a hand, or just wave, wave at me and say, yeah, that's, that's me. I, I want to I wanna give my life to Christ. I, I want I want that. I want this to be a new day, a beginning of a new journey, a new life. You know, there's still room in the pool down there where we're going to do baptisms. And what Peter said was that baptism is the pledge of a clear conscience before the Lord. Doesn't mean that we're not going to be perfect. What it means is when we're imperfect, we pledge to get it right. We pledge to walk in repentance. We pledge to let Him reweave the fabric of our life to be pure and right. Anybody? You don't have to get baptized today. I don't want to, but, but if, you're, if you say yes, that's, that's me today. I want to give you one more moment, one more chance to say yeah. Could we just pray this prayer together? Just pray this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, today I give you my life. Today I give you my life. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. I want to put off the old. I want to put off the old. And put on the new. Put on the new. I want to die to myself. I want to die to myself. So that I can live for you. So that I can live for you. My thoughts, my thoughts, my attitudes, my attitudes, my actions, my actions, and my future, and my future. Lord, I give them to you. Lord, I give them to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I would like my uh, the baptism candidates to join me, Justin and Keely and and Brim and Amanda. Come on up here. And what we what we do is. Uh, you don't have to say something, because I know that that's a stretch for some. But I want you to see um, the uh, those that have said, yeah, I'm ready to go on this next step on the journey. Okay? And uh, then when we get down there, it's noisy, and you'll kind of see what's happening. And we're going to, it's a red flag, so we have to abide by their missions again. So ankle, kind of knee-ish, deep-ish. And then I get the we'll, bucket. You know, bring it all back out, and then you can I got one to go again. So, um, but it's new life, okay? And as this is a new day, Bryn, I want to just say I believe God's gonna He's gonna eradicate some fear, not just in this area of going to the water, but I believe that today. We say this that when we're in a tank. Is there anything you want to leave at the bottom of the tank? I love the analogy of going down here. Our sins are what? Washed away. Yes. Never to be remembered again. Anything you want to say? Okay. Amanda, I've been watching your journey. And it has been exciting to watch you continue to move towards Jesus. Anything you'd like to say to the people? In December, I had a friend. I was on the phone on a Saturday night, and he asked me what I was doing the next day. And I said, I don't know, probably not. He said, put on your best T-shirt and go to church. They don't like you. That's not the church for you. I Googled and I searched, and I found this old four-square church. And the next morning, I went, and I sat in my car for 30 minutes, and I cried because I was afraid. And Pastor Sherry is the first one I saw, and she smiled and gave me such a greeting. And Pastor Grant was the second, and he sat and had a conversation with me that I didn't think that I would have. And I kind of verbally diaried on him and told him what was wrong with my life and how I felt lonely and I was just sad. And he asked me what I was looking for, and he said, I, I told him I was looking for happiness. And he said, well, you came to the right place.
right place because today's sermon is on joy. So it was meant to be. And from that day forward, I have felt so much love and compassion from this, from this church and from this family, and I appreciate everyone. Oh, we love you, and we're so glad that you're saying yes to that next step. So that's awesome. Well, today your last names are different, but next Sunday they will be the same. Amen. So before you get... Before you guys get married, we're going to try and dunk them together. And uh, I might, might need a little help out there, okay? And uh, it's, it's, like, it's like a choreographed, you know, that, yeah, let's, uh, go ahead, just say what you just said. Want to start this journey on a clean slate? Amen. The foundation of life, as well as the foundation of any relationship, and the foundation of marriage, most certainly, has to be upon the renewed place where we are in Christ. And when you take away that foundation, oh, you can build a house out of sand. <laughs> it ain't going to stand very long. And so as we go down here, I want you to remember your journey with Christ. For some of you that have been baptized, remember when you were baptized and what that represented. And say, God, would you just renew me all over again. Let's pray. Lord, this is phenomenal. The picture that you give us of washing our sins away, of submitting to something that reminds us of your renewing power, your restoring power. Today, Lord, celebrate with these who are taking that next step forward. And then, Lord, would you fill them with your Holy Spirit anew and afresh for this next leg of the journey as we say yes over and over and over again to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. You all ready? You're all you're doing good. Let's uh, let's roll. We have somebody taking pictures. Uh, Everybody sorry. take pictures. Okay. I'm still screaming. I'm still screaming. Uh, how much battery? Yep. All right. All right, folks. We're gonna just stroll on down to the beach there. Y'all gonna come with us. I hope these pants don't fall off in there. as tight as they can get. All right, folks, we're on a trip. Wait a minute. Why are they going? Are they going down that way? There's Tom. Oh, you want me to remember what I said? <laughs> uh, basically, um, looking at Ephesians 1 7, um, where it said we have redemption through, through his blood, along with, along with mercy and, and um, mercy and grace. And just kind of gave a little soliloquy about my, my little backstory. Oh. Okay. Well, I used to run from God a lot. <laughs> and it, it, you'll be amazed. Um, I mean, because basically, I used to have God used to send people my way all the time and ask me the same question over and over again. Why you why you why you keep running? Why you keep running? At first, I wasn't understanding it, and I well, I, I understood it, but I, I wasn't letting it register. Right. And 
you know, and then, you know, like I said, one day came to church over here and, you know, everybody was all loving, everything was warm and nice and everything, but because of what I believed in myself, right. you know, uh, me not being worthy, me right. being garbage, me being trash, you know, right. all, all those labels that we normally carry and, yeah. and just wear on ourselves, those chains, yeah. I was getting ready to run again. Okay. Um, but what made the difference this time is that Pastor Durant actually came to the house. He, he was actually looking for us. I never had that happen before where we went to a church and they had Pastor come looking for us afterwards. You know, so that made the difference and I kept coming back. You know, and I really never understood that, that part about our redemption was in Jesus and it was by his blood. You know, um, and the reason I kept running because I was I was afraid of God. I didn't want him to see those labels. I didn't want him to see that 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 sin that I was carrying. You know, I don't want to stand before a holy God wearing all this garbage. You know, believing all this stuff on me. And um, then when I finally understood that, and I started accepting it, then my family came along behind me and started accepting and believing it too. And um. That's when I when I started accepting the redemption that it was given, because I, I, I was always wondering why why God keep coming to me, why God keep looking for me. I, although I was hiding from Him, He kept looking for me and pursuing behind me. It's because He wanted to redeem me. He wanted to redeem me from all those lies, all those labels. And th and that's what He did. When I finally accepted that, He covered me in His blood, redeemed me. When I went to the waters of baptism, all those labels, I left them down there. And you know, when I came up. I came up with a new name. You know, he, he called me son. He, he called me. He called me son. He called me redeemed. And that that was it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Here we are at the baptism. Yeah. <laughs> kind of open this a little bit. There you go, right there. I wanna be. I wanna be by the ocean. I see a boat. Boat. Ah. Yeah. Boat. You can sit over there with the girls. You don't have to get in the water. Hold on, man. Woo. All right, I'm gonna get closer. Just a little bit. All right. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. All right. There we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks. Nice. 
in front of me. Bye, folks. 